want to look at uh, Matthew chapter 17. Matthew 17. And after six days, Jesus taketh Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bringeth them up into an high mountain apart, and was transfigured before them, and his face did shine as the sun, and his raiment was uh, white as the light. And behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias, talking with him. Now these are two men, if you don't know much about the Bible, Moses and Elias was, or Elijah, was actually uh, two men from the Old Testament. And here they are, brought forth into the New Testament, as it were, and they're appearing here with the Lord Jesus Christ on the Mount of Transfiguration, as we call it. Then answered Peter, and said unto Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If thou wilt, let us make here three tabernacles, one for thee, and one for Moses, and one for Isaiah. Now here he's making a fatal mistake. Yes, he put the Lord Jesus Christ uh, first, but the point is this, he's basically bringing the Lord Jesus Christ down to the level of Moses and Elias. And that is clearly wrong. Because we know from the word of God the Lord Jesus Christ to be God in a body. God was manifest in the flesh. In fact, one of his titles is, I often say this, is Emmanuel, which being interpreted is God with us. To think that God came down in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ to be our saviour, that to me is absolutely amazing. Amazing that God would humble himself so much and become obedient even unto the death of the cross. So we see here the Lord Jesus Christ and at his crucifixion he was humbled. Humbled, we cannot understand how much he was humbled. When he came down from heaven's glory for a start, that was an amazing thing. You see, God was clothed in a body that in that body he by the grace of God should taste death for every man and be crucified upon the cross of Calvary in our place to take the sinner's place. He himself has no sin and yet he was made sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. While he yet spake, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, a voice out of the cloud, which said, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Hear ye him. So here is the Father speaking from heaven, and he's saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Not just pleased, but well pleased, and he's saying, hear ye him. In other words, don't take any notice of Moses and Eli Elias. You need to take heed to what the Lord Jesus Christ is saying. Hear him. And I would say that again this morning, that you need to hear the voice of the Son of God. And as another verse says, and they that hear shall live. If you're prepared to respond to the message of eternal redemption, through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. This is what God wants for each and every one of us, my friend, that our soul would be saved, that we would be in heaven for all of eternity. So when the moment of death comes, we're ready to meet God. I wonder, are you ready to meet God? This is extremely urgent, this message of salvation. You need to get right with God. You need to have forgiveness for your sins. Now, the only way is through the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, my friend, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And when the disciples heard it, they fell on their face and were sore afraid. And Jesus came and touched them and said, Arise and be not afraid. And when they had lifted up their eyes, they saw no man save Jesus only. They saw no man except the Lord Jesus Christ only. Now why does it say Jesus only? 
You see, the title or name Jesus means Jehovah the Saviour or the Salvation of Jehovah. And in the Old Testament, Jonah 2, 9, I believe it is, it says, Salvation is of the Lord. In other words, if we're ever going to be saved, it'll have to be through faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. God has provided the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. I think of John the Baptist in John chapter 1 and verse 29. He said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. What a wonderful thing that we can look to a man, a sinless man, and receive forgiveness for our sins through that man, through faith in the finished work of that man, our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that uh, Elias must first come? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listened. In other words, whatsoever they wanted to do. Uh, likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. And when they were come to the multitude, there came to him a certain man kneeling down to him and saying, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and sore vexed. For oft times he uh, falleth into the fire, and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Then Jesus answered, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither, or bring him here to me. And Jesus rebuked the demon, and he departed out of him. And the child was cured from that very hour. Then came the disciples to Jesus apart and said, Why could not we cast him out? And Jesus said unto them, Because of your unbelief. For verily or truly I say unto you, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove thence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and nothing shall be impossible unto you. Howbeit this kind goeth uh, not out but by prayer and fasting. And while they abode in Galilee, Jesus said unto them, The Son of Man shall be betrayed into the hands of men, and they shall kill him, and the third day he shall rise again. Sorry, and the third day he shall be raised again. And they were exceeding sorry. And when they were come to Capernaum, they that received tribute money came to Peter and said, Doth not your master pay tribute? In other words, pay taxes? He said, Yes. And when he was come into the house, Jesus prevented him, saying, What thinkest thou, Simon? of whom do the kings uh, of the earth take custom or tribute of their own children or of strangers? Peter said unto him, of strangers. Jesus said unto him, then are the children free. Notwithstanding, lest we should offend them, go thou to the sea and cast an hook and take up the fish that first cometh up and when thou hast opened his mouth, thou shalt find a piece of money. That take, and give unto them for me and thee. So here's another miracle just taking place. The Lord had provided a coin in this fish's mouth, and the fish that took the, the hook, took the bait on the hook, 
was the one that the Lord had put the money into, into that fish's mouth. That's an amazing thing, isn't it? This is another proof that the Lord Jesus Christ, he is God. God manifest in the flesh, God in a body. Moving on now to Matthew chapter 18. At the same time came the disciples unto Jesus, and, uh, saying, Who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child unto him, and set him in the midst of them, and said, Verily or truly I say unto you, Except ye be converted, that means or turned around, and be become as little children, in other words, their attitude was wrong, they had a proud attitude, it was wrong in the sight of the Lord. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. And this is what we need to be saved. We need to be humble before the Lord. We need to realize our lower state before the Lord. Realize that we're sinners in the sight of a holy and righteous God. That God who is absolutely apart from sin, He's set apart from sin. He has nothing, absolutely nothing to do with sin. And yet you and I have sinned. You and I are sinners in the sight of the Lord, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We need to have forgiveness for those sins, and the only way is through the once-for-all sacrifice of the Lord Jesus Christ upon the cross of Calvary. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child the same is the greatest, or the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoso, whoso shall receive one such little child in my name receiveth me. But whoso shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it were better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and that he were drowned in the depth of the sea. Woe unto the world because of offences, for it must needs be that offences come. But woe to that man by whom the offence cometh. Wherefore, if thy hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off, and cast them from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life whole or maimed, rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. That is, the lake of fine brimstone, where there's weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth, that is called the second death. It is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. God is able to save your soul this morning, my friend. And if you come in repentance toward God, that's a change of mind. Simply agree with God that you are a sinner and then put your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, your soul will be saved. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And if thine eye offend thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell fire. Well, we'll leave the reading there, but basically don't let anything or anyone, even the devil, stop you from getting saved. We need to understand this is an urgent message and the devil does not want you to be in heaven. He's going down to the lake of fine brimstone with his weeping and wailing and gnashing of teeth and he wants to drag as many people with him as he can. The devil is a deceiver, he's a liar, he's a murderer, and he, yes, he's a liar. And he abode not in the truth. He's a liar and the father of it. He invented lies. He hates us, but God showed forth his love unto us by sending his son. But God commended, that means he exhibited or displayed his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Remember, in whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. Have you come to Christ? Have you come in repentance, acknowledging that you are a sinner before him and then believing on the Lord Jesus Christ and obtaining eternal life through faith alone in him? 
If you're interested in this, look me up, youtube.com forward slash peace by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.